Welcome to the Keyport Maker Series. This is where we design, build, and hack EDC gear. In this debut episode of the series, I'm gonna show you how to use the files we provide for our maker program to design an insert for the Keyport pivot. Now, if this already sounds too complicated for you, just keep watching. I'm gonna show you how you can do this without any CAD experience or tools. And if you're not a key porter yet, don't worry. This will work on any keychain or any key organizer out there. So today we're going to start off very basic and design this simple beard comb. If you have zero CAD experience, I'm going to recommend that you go download Fusion 360 from Autodesk. I'm not a sponsor of this and I don't even use it myself typically. I use SolidWorks, but Fusion 360, I've messed around with it a little bit and it has all the same features. And you can download the Tinker version for personal use for free. And there's tons of tutorials online and I'm gonna show you just the basics of just how to make this simple beard comb using Fusion. So without further ado, let's build it. All right, the first thing you wanna do is get Fusion 360 set up on your machine. It works on both Mac or PC, so you don't have to worry about that. The link to download Fusion is in the description, so go ahead and get that set up. After that, you wanna to go to mykeyport.com and download the maker files for the pivot insert. The link for that is also down below. Once you get all that set up, you're gonna to wanna to open the part in Fusion, and now we are ready to get started on the design. So get familiar with a couple things here like how to navigate around in here and you can grab this box to orbit the part around anytime you need to get a different perspective you can also click on each of these planes to have it automatically give you an orthographic view of that particular plane there's also the orbit key down here and you could set up key commands as well so you can just hit a button on your keyboard but I think orbiting around your part is critical to get the design you want and move quickly. You can also zoom in and out using the scroll wheel on your mouse. And now let's go ahead and thicken this thing up. So if I escape out of the orbit tool and click on this line down here, you have the dialog for the dimension of any of the, uh, lines that you click on the drawing. So we can see that this is one millimeter thick. So we're gonna to wanna to make it a little bit thicker and I'm gonna use this press pull tool to add one and a half millimeters to the thickness. So I type in 1.5 and now you can see when I click on this line, it's 2.5 millimeters. So now we need to cut out the teeth of our beard comb. So I'm going to select this plane, right click and hit create sketch. And now I'm going to be able to create a sketch right on the surface of, of the part. So I'm going to go up here to the rectangle tool and draw my first rectangle here. And then if you look at this, you'll see that these three lines are blue and the bottom line is black. The line on the bottom is black because it's collinear with this main line here, which means it is fully defined. And these lines are not fully defined, which means I need to put dimensions on them. So I'm gonna make this 11, the height, and then I'm going to make this uh, 13 millimeters from that back edge. And now you can see I've got three black lines. So the last dimension I need is to do the thickness of this. And I'm gonna go with 1.7 millimeters. So that is the first cut for the teeth of our beard comb. And now I need to replicate this and have it go all the way down. So to replicate that, there's something here called rectangular pattern. So if you click on that and then I select these objects, now I can replicate that in the Y direction or the X direction. And all the dialogue is for that is right here. So right now I have a distance of zero. And so let's see what happens when I put 
four in there, four millimeters. And then there's quantity three. That means it's gonna replicate it three times. And then the distribution extent or spacing, I think we wanna do spacing. And now I just switch that to two millimeters. So let's try four. And now you can see that I've got probably too much space between these teeth. So you can see these little icons on each piece. That means I can click those and change the design at any time, change the dimension. And this is the rectangular sketch pattern icon. So if I double click that, I get this dialog box back so that we can modify these dimensions. So I'm gonna go with 3.5 might work and then let's try let's try 16 of these and see where we go so now you can see i have distributed these uh, rectangles all the way across but i probably need about one more here so and also let me put a dimension between one of these so that i can see exactly where we at where we are at so that's gonna be 1.8. It's asking to create a driven dimension because since it's fully defined, I cannot change the dimension using this one. It's going to change by modifying one of these other dimensions. So if I click this and get this reference dialog box back, and let's say I change this to 3.4, you're gonna see that that dimension changed automatically because it's a driven dimension. Don't let that confuse you. Just go ahead and experiment and you'll figure out what all this stuff does after doing it for a little while. I'm gonna go back to 3.5 and then I'm gonna go to 17 and let's take a look now. Now this looks pretty good. I've got equal distance between this front edge and all the teeth. And now what I'm gonna wanna do is cut this out. So we're gonna go back to the press pull tool here. And then I'm gonna select each one of these rectangles and we're gonna basically use this to cut it out. So as you select each one, they turn blue. And then let's go ahead and rotate this and see which direction it's cutting. So this says uh, one side distance, we wanna do all. So we're gonna cut all the way through and we're going the wrong way. So we're gonna flip it. And now you can see that it's giving me a preview of what's going to be cut when I hit okay. Boom, so now I've got this all cut out looking pretty good. And it's actually almost done. The next thing I want to do is add some fillets, which are curvature of these inner uh, cutouts, and then also down here to make it a little more comfortable. This would not be very comfortable with these square edges if you were to actually comb your scalp or face with it. So we're going to round that off by using the fillet tool. and. You have to select each one of these lines individually. And as you can see, I can do it right through other geometry. So I just have to select each one of these. Now that I have each one of those selected, I'm gonna go with 0.35 for the tangent. And if I hit okay, now you can see that these have been round it off on the inside edge. It's also a good idea to round off any inside corners in any design because it strengthens it up quite a bit to add those fillets on the inside corners. Now, the last thing I wanna do here is just do another fillet right on the bottom part of this comb on the teeth. So I'm gonna hit the fillet tool again and I'm gonna go through and select each one of these bottom edge lines. Now I'm done with that, I'm gonna come back and hit 
0.35 here, 0.35 again, and hit OK, and that looks pretty good. Now keep in mind that you might prefer a little bit more or less distance between the teeth. You might prefer thinner teeth, and that's the beauty of having a 3D printer available because you can print out multiple versions and test it yourself. You also might prefer wood or metal over plastic when it comes to your beard comb. So you can figure out other ways to build this. All right, so it doesn't look quite finished to me. I want to fill it this face so it gives slight roundness to the entire perimeter. And so I'm gonna hit the form tool again and hit that face. And I'm just gonna put a really small fillet on there, 0.15. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing on the other side. Okay, so my file's done and I'm ready to export it. So I'm gonna go up here to the dialog, go to the export setting, and I'm gonna save this as beard comb one, and then I wanna save it as a .stl file. That's the file you need if you're going to 3D print it, and then hit export and now it's ready to import into whatever your program is for 3D printing. You could also use that .stl file to upload it to an online service and have your part 3D printed and shipped to you. So I'm using a Prusa Mini and I just wanna show you the basic settings. Your dialogue might be different. I also know that Fusion 360 has its own more specific export dialog for 3D printing, but I can do all that I need right here in the Prusa Mini slicer. So I just imported my beard comb and actually this setting looks pretty good. You can choose how much infill you want. I'm gonna go with 50% and I'm gonna go with 0.1 detail. And, and then everything else looks fine here. So I'm gonna hit slice, and that's gonna show me the print pattern for each layer of filament as it goes. And then I'm gonna export the G code, which is the dialog that the printer actually reads so it can convert the 3D file into an actual 3D part. And that's it, now we're ready to print. All right, we got our part. Looks pretty good. Just a little bit of cleanup. If you're wondering why the starter file is shaped the way it is, it's so that when you install it in the pivot, it fits perfectly within the profile of the chassis. Now, when I put all these tools into the pivot and then I stow them, as you can see, all the tools are hidden behind this profile. So when you stick it in your pocket, it's a lot more comfortable. When you add keys to your pivot, sometimes the key heads can protrude out the side. And then when you stick it in your pocket, it digs into the side of your leg. This is my pivot that I've been carrying for many years. I cut off all the key heads so that it would fit more comfortably in my pocket. In a future video, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. Even on car keys with plastic heads, high security keys like multi-lock and abloy, and just common metal keys. So the size of these inserts are really up to you for the pivot. If you wanna make your inserts stick way out the sides or be much smaller, that will work as well. You can make it thicker, you can add electronics, you can make it out of wood, metal, plastic, you can 3D print it, you can make it with hand tools, you can get very creative with your design and do whatever you want. If you're a keyporter, you know that we have a lot of different modules and a lot of different inserts that you can put in your keyport and build your own custom stack. So this is just a way to enhance your personal product so you can make the stuff that you have always wanted in there. So how can you make the part with no tools? I mentioned that in the beginning of the video and here's how you can do it. There are tons of services online that you can basically export your file, upload it, and then choose your materials. When you upload the file, it typically gives you an instant quote right on the spot. There's a few that I have used in the past, Proto Labs, Zometry, Send, Cut, Send. I will recommend all three of those for you to get started. 
this is probably the best way if you have zero tools to get started and see if you like doing this stuff. And then maybe the next step is to get a cheap 3D printer, which there are a ton of options there as well. So if you don't want to spend any money on the on your design and you just want to kind of build it yourself and you've got a few hand tools laying around, this beard comb is a good way to get started. You can make this out of wood using basic hand tools in your garage. You don't need a bunch of fancy tools. You don't even need a CAD subscription or purchase any software. You can do all of this for free to get started. All the files you need are on our website and all the links are down there in the description of this video. There's also links to some of the services I recommended and the software. So while you're down there, Please comment if there's something you'd like me to design on this series in the future. Give us a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching.